Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another Friday shop review slash matchmaking thing. Because Wargaming has changed the matchmaker, I will talk about that in this video as well. But first, let's have a look at all the shop offers. What is worth buying, what isn't worth buying. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Would you buy gold for gold? Well, that's what you can do now. 4,000 gold for 220 gold boosters and 220 credit boosters. Now, the gold boosters makes most sense to use in tier 10 because you can get up to 20 gold per battle, making 4,400 if you win all 220 battles, which is not going to happen. So you're basically losing gold value here. Doesn't make any sense. 220 credit boosters obviously add some value. Credit booster is most effective in tier 8. Gold boost is most effective in tier 10. You have to play 440 battles to get value out of this. Ideally, this would include something like 450 credit boosters. Then it would be a good bundle like this. It's just dumb. Just like credits in a bundle like this. You buy gold, you earn credits. That's how the game works. And you also can buy times fives. But there are better bundles out there that don't include credits. Credits are a lot easier to obtain than other things. Don't pay for it. If you're lacking credits, play the game. If you don't enjoy the game enough, but grind the credits, you probably shouldn't do it. So, anyway, don't buy this. In the tank section, what is most important for a vehicle? That is the value of the vehicle. Imagine you go into a car dealer and you find a Toyota Prius for 200,000 euros. That thing better have diamond-plated rims, or otherwise it looks like a pretty damn bad deal. That's kind of what the ML9051 here is. 8.5k for locked times fives for somehow a leprechaun's gold avatar. I don't know where the leprechauns in Sweden are. I mean, if there are any Swedish leprechauns among you, then please tell me in the comment section. I would love to know you. But uh, yeah, 8.5k, not a great bundle right here. Not the best deal. The value is the most important one because if you get a Prius for 200k, you're dumb. If you get a Prius for 30k, why are you buying a Prius? It has to be a good tank at a good value to make it worth it. Otherwise, you just... I mean, you can also review vehicles and just call everything good, but I'm not doing that. I'm looking at the value. So here's the thing. ML951, good tank, not a good value. Moving on. Super Conqueror, unlocked times fives right here. Also Leprechaun Avatar for some reason, obviously... Leprechaun Avatar camouflages has no value in my review. Super Conqueror is a good vehicle with the caveat that if you have not played a hull down heavy at tier 10, being a, a Type 71 or a T125, if you have not owned those vehicles and you haven't played those vehicles, you do not buy a Super Conqueror because this is the enhancement. This is the upgrade to make credits with. You're not going to get as much credits at tier 8, but you're going to get a lot of credits for a tier 10. So this is the upgrade. Don't get this if you haven't already played Hull Down Tier 10s and confirmed that you enjoy something like this. Because remember, there are no refunds and you better buy something too late and regret not having it bought earlier than buying something that you then don't want to own. And then we have the Heavy Offensive. <laughs> Just about speaking of buying too early and regretting it. My initial review of the T-77 was obviously very negative. That was because of the price, because the more an item costs, the more you expect it to do. And if it's above average, but costs five times the average, it's not going to be any good. That's how that works. But now, look at this value. 10,000 gold, T77, KV5. Unfortunately, the times 5 XPs here are locked, but you're getting crew XP boosters, you're getting free XP boosters, you're getting all the boosters in here, obviously pointless avatars and whatever, but you're getting two good tier rates right here for 10,000 gold, two vehicles, and you're also getting the booster. You don't get that here with the ammo. 1,500 gold less. You're not getting the boosters. You're not getting a second tank. That's what value is. That's what's important. This is great value, and I can still highly recommend it because most people are going to do decently well with it. Now, obviously, if you're a medium-only player or a tankster-only player, you should know that that's not a recommendation for you but for the general player this is a great bundle to pick up so if you've got 10k gold lying around that you don't need for anything else i recommend it however we go from great back to t28 concept now here's the important thing and here is why stats and reality aren't always the same thing a vehicle like this has very high win rate and it performs very well does that now mean that you absolutely have to pick it up and own it no 
What this means is that this is a very specific type of vehicle that is going to work for a specific type of player. Most people are going to buy this thing and they get, after three battles, they're going to be like, what the hell is this, bruv? And then it's going to absolutely drown in the garage and never be played again. So this is a very specific vehicle that only works for a, a small amount of player base. And I don't recommend picking up something like this like ever. It might perform well in the hands of those that enjoy it. And if you are a tank destroyer enjoyer that enjoys slow, boring tank destroyers, congratulations, this is a tank for you. But for everybody else, that's not it. So I don't recommend something like this. The value here is not worst. I mean, Chieftain, unfortunately, the times fives are locked, which is not great. But you also get the boosters in this bundle. So if you are a slow tank destroyer enjoyer, and also pointless tank because it's a tier 7 and you get less crits and less damage than as a tier 8. The Chieftain is a solid vehicle. It's not the greatest tank. It's not a must-have vehicle like a T-54E2 might be. But it is a solid tank that can be added to a collection and enhance it rather than subtract value from it. But remember, no refunds. Just like a certain YouTuber's opinion on new tanks, my opinion is always the same when it comes to crates. Open your free ones and stay the hell away from the paid one. And that also goes for the draws, like for example the KPZRH here, which is accurate. That That's it. What did you expect? It, it's accurate. That's all. There's, there's no special thing. It's a vehicle. It's not worth buying. Why would you want this? Just get a Centurion 5-1. It's much better. Now, I have to give a huge shout out to Wargaming's marketing team because whenever I think they have finally found at the bottom what is humanly possible in terms of gambling garbage to sell, they find a new level to go even lower every single time. Now, the mystery box draw. Is there really anything I have to say about this? It's deplorable at best. Stay away from things like this. And if you buy things like this, you're the reason humanity's failing. And then, at last, we have the 1 to 1 B draw. Now, here's the thing. The 1 to 1 B, it's not terrible, but it's also not good. And so it means it's not worth it. Because why would you spend money on mid vehicles when instead, most of you, I assume, aren't going to spend their whole inheritance money that they got from grandma on this game, especially if you're not a whale that spends hundreds of euros a month. You spend like 20 euros a month, you get a T-77 and a KV-5. You don't waste your money on that, I hope. Who's dumb enough to buy this? What the hell? For 6.5k, you can get a tier 8 premium, and here you can now look like, I don't know, lava guy. What is this? Does anybody pay for this? Shame. And there's also this thing, which surprisingly makes more sense than the ML 1951 in the shop because 2,000 gold cost more than 3 euros 50. So you can't really lose here because that's the main problem with crates. Crates, you always lose value. But in this case, you don't lose value because 2,000 gold is already worth more than 350. So... I guess you can try. I don't recommend this still though. Wargaming has made drastic changes to the way the standard battle matchmaker works. Essentially, it now works a bit like raiding battles. And Wargaming didn't follow my advice in this video that I made two and a half years ago. And instead, just made a matchmaking that's raiding battles and it punishes good players. Now, as a good player, yeah, that's kind of... The point, because here's the thing, Blitz is a casual game for a casual audience, and the casual player is always going to be the main focus. So by dragging down good players, you avoid what happened in PUBG, where you have good players owning all the noobs that have no chance to ever fight back. And that is obviously a terrible thing for good players. And overall, I don't think it's a good change anyway. However, not having great players run wild on noobs is a good thing for the matchmaker, but the way Wargaming implemented it here is quite terrible. What do you think about it? Put it down in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.